Well, businesses continue to reopen in East County. Joining us now with more on that, as well as the latest on vaccination centers in East County, City of El Cajon Mayor Bill Wells. Good morning, Mayor Wells. Good to see you. Hey, good morning. So uh, let's first talk about the vaccination center because that's uh, just great news, easier access for people in East County. How has that been going? Yeah, the Sharp Grossmont Hospital has uh, set up a new vaccination center at Grossmont Center, and now they can do 2,000 uh, patients a day, which is really a, a great thing. So they're, they're moving forward pretty quickly. And with the lifting of the stay-at-home order, I know this gives uh, a lot of businesses that were struggling in East County to open up, at least in some capacity, be it uh, a certain percentage for salons and the like, or uh, outdoor dining for a lot of the restaurants. What is the feedback you've been hearing? Yeah, we're seeing a lot of businesses slowly emerge from hibernation. Um, I think that they are a little bit skeptical, as uh, they, rightly so, because they've opened and closed and opened and closed, and they've spent a lot of money uh, meeting guidelines. And now they're cautiously optimistic that this is the beginning of the end of this. And I am too. I I, I think that the, the mood is uh, really moving against shutdowns. And I think people have finally come to the conclusion that shutdowns don't work. So I, I think we're uh, uh, seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah. As, as far as, you know, cities and, and vaccinations go, we, we heard this uh, yesterday that the city of, of San Diego received some 1,200 doses that they were able to, to give out to government workers and those 65 and older. Do you know of, of any vaccinations coming to other city officials in order to, to distribute the vaccine? Well, not in our city. Um, we, we don't have any... Um, new vaccinations, but there are a couple of small vaccination centers. I don't want to give out the locations because they're just for EMS workers and firefighters. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, that at least is, is happening. I think that's really important that we get our EMS workers vaccinated. Um, I wish that the police were all, all being vaccinated and that seems to be hung up, but I think that will be coming. But unfortunately, I think there's a little bit of politics involved in that. Well, expand further on that, if you will. What sort of politics? Because, I mean, this is this has been a big discussion. We talked to uh, Chula Vista Chief Roxana Kennedy about this issue and really wanting uh, law enforcement to be considered because apparently a lot of other people who don't have that initial uh, emergency point of contact are getting vaccinated first, which seems puzzling to a lot of people. Yeah, I think it is puzzling. <laughs> you know, really, if if I had been the one setting up the whole vaccination schedule, I would have first gone for anybody over 70, because we know that 90% of the people that mm -hmm. die are over 70 years old. Um, they decided to go with uh, hospital workers first, which is, um, I, I understand the logic behind that, but we also know that 30 or so percentage of hospital workers don't even want the vaccine. So I, I think that, that we could have been a, a little bit better about about this, but getting back to the concept about police officers, you know, our police officers are out there working with the homeless. They're out there working with people of every stripe and they should be uh, protected because they're, they're meeting with all kinds of people in close proximity. They have people in the back of their squad cars sometimes. So I really think that we should go with the police, but unfortunately um, I think that the defund the police movement that we saw in this last summer is uh involved in the decisions to kind of push, push police officers to the back of the line. And I really am concerned about this because this should be a health and safety issue, not a political issue. Yeah, well, <laughs> politics is infectious as, as we all know very well. Yeah, but we've got to resist that, you know, mm -hmm. I, we, especially when it, when it comes to uh, protecting our police officers, that we've got to resist that concept. And I know that the, the county is moving very, very far to the left. I mean, all, all of San Diego County has significantly moved to the left in the, in the last election cycle. But nevertheless, we've got to um, have some standards. And there, there is concern for residents because officers are often first on the scene whenever you do need to to make a, a call after a crash or call nine one one. So it's it's really about their safety uh -huh. and safety of residents as well. Uh, that, that's been brought up. What about the issue of getting more vaccine to? areas like East County. I know it just seems it's in short supply all around. Are you finding any answers as to maybe some more accessibility to vaccines? When more will become available? Well, it's a little bit confused. Uh, we're doing everything we can to try to get more vaccines in the city. 
Uh, we're working with one of the local hospitals to bring in mobile vans to give vaccines. But the problem is, is that everybody's got a lot of good ideas and they've got great distribution ideas, but they don't have the vaccine available. And that we just have to be patient and wait for that. But I also think we have to be smart about who we're giving it to. And again, I go back to the concept that we mostly should be giving it to elderly, elderly folks. Yeah. And obviously with businesses opening up, you've been a big proponent of, of opening up further. I know you've been pushing for that. Uh, are, are a lot of businesses in East County and El Cajon sort of doing the, the peaceful protest as, as we've seen and still staying open? You know, there's not been a tremendous amount of that. I think our, our city, like every other city in the county, has people have decided that uh, they've got to stay open or they'll never reopen again. We think that we're going to lose somewhere around 50 to maybe more, maybe up, up to 70 percent of uh, restaurants will never reopen. Uh, so, yeah, people have uh, quietly tried to stay open. But um, I think most people comply with the orders and people are cautiously opening up today. I know the downtown cafe is opening up. I I know the Texas Roadhouse has lots of outdoor seating. Um, lots of restaurants have lots of outdoor seating. So hopefully uh, we're all going to get back into the swing of normal life. Yeah, looking forward to that. <laughs> Mayor Wells, as oh, always. Man, so am I. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> good to catch up with you. Thank you. Uh, some good positive steps happening. So thanks for the update. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me. And starting next week.